Hi there, welcome to Coffee Talk. Mike Gennati from CatholicFamilyMan.com and I am here with Dr. Peter J. Colosi from St. Charles Borromeo Seminary where I'm a professor. And you know, Dr. Colosi, yes. peace. <laughs> so, uh, it's Lent. Right. Lent is this Wednesday. That's it starts. Right. It starts Wednesday. So, Wednesday they're going to put ashes on our forehead. Mm -hmm. And it's a time for sadness for the next 40 days, isn't it? Well, no, actually. Wait, wait, what do you mean, no? no. I have a sackcloth, <laughs> ashes, I'm ready to mope around, not bathe, well, look miserable. People don't understand, actually, the relationship between happiness and sacrifice. You might be surprised that it's the opposite of what you just said. No. Yes. There's a vice that, uh, you know, we have vices and virtues in Catholic teaching, and one of the vices is sloth. Sloth. Oh, the Latin. I saw that. I yeah. watched Discovery Channel yeah. last week, <laughs> and you they should... showed the guy climbing yeah. real slow. <laughs> yeah. Huh? That, That's an animal. He's Catholic? Yeah, yeah. No. That <laughs> is why people think sloth means laziness. It's related to laziness, but sloth does not mean laziness. St. Thomas Aquinas gives us a definition of the vice of sloth. He sa yeah. He says, I'm going to do a slight... Uh, make the translation more into our terms, but he says um, that sloth mm -hmm. is the feeling of sadness that overcomes you when you realize that being good is difficult. The feeling of sadness that overcomes you when you realize that being good is difficult. Ah. Now that sadness and depression at the difficulty of the good does then <clears throat> cause you to be lazy. Okay. But now the cure, the cure for that sadness is sacrifice. Sacrifice makes you happy. Wait a minute, wait a minute. And what are we called to in Lent? Prayer, fasting, and almsgiving. Which is a Three ways to sacrifice. Three yes. ways to... So wait a minute, yeah. so you got three. Three. There's three, three items that we're supposed to uh, ramp up, if you will, during Lent. One is prayer, one is almsgiving, and one is, is fasting. And, and, and not bathing is not on the list. That's not, you should keep So bathing. I can keep bathing. Keep bathing, yes, yes. My and, wife and, will and, appreciate and, that. And one of the things <laughs> that, that should be done here is that these three items, you should pick levels of them that are doable mm -hmm. for you. They should be a little more than you do during the year, but they're doable so that you feel the sacrifice, but you know you can reach that bar, and once you reach it, you feel that sort of inner happiness or satisfaction that comes from, from having having done the sacrifice. So, so let's go through them. So you said there's three. So what's number one? Prayer. Prayer. So people, so people could, if they don't pray the rosary on a daily basis, they could start pray the rosary every day during Lent. Or, or you could pick a time period that's not too long for you, if you're not used to it, to sit in front of the Blessed Sacrament and commit yourself to 10 minutes a day in silence sitting in front of the tabernacle just looking at Jesus or 20 what, what if somebody can't get to one if it's hard for them you know if they don't have one that close or you know some churches don't have 24 7 right. what would be something else they could do similarly well the rosary at home or, <clears throat> or even the divine mercy chapel chapel of divine mercy yes. or another thing that's very beautiful is a method of praying scripture called Lexio Divina we will, that would be a topic for a separate that could, video. That could be a song, right? <laughs> but the thing is, um, just meditating on Scripture for reading it and try to imagine yourself in the scene of Scripture. Like, like when that. Jesus, in Luke chapter 5, he asked St. Peter to take the boat out a little bit so he can, he can speak to the people. You could imagine yourself as St. Peter trying to keep the boat facing the people while Jesus is talking, and he's hearing Jesus out of his ear, and then hear what, what Christ says um, to him after that experience, and how, how Peter obeys him and then follows him. So that's another thing you can do. But the point is to pick an amount of time that's something you're not used to, mm -hmm. but also something you can do. Don't pick two hours of silence in front of the Blessed Sacrament. Pick ten minutes or, 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 or with Scripture. So that's prayer. So what's number two? Al almsgiving means making a real sacrifice. I mean, typically yeah. there we think about money, but it could be time. Yeah. Although I would say that it would be good to do a monetary almsgiving. Find a way to give an amount of money that you're not used to giving away. Right. Away. You have to feel it a little, but it doesn't have to be your whole savings, obviously, but it should be an amount... Like if a number pops into your head, add a few more dollars to it, and then give that away, and, and feel that, that little sacrifice there. And, and if you're somewhat like a student, right, who right, doesn't right. have a lot, you know, 
I love the one scripture where, you know, they talk about the woman going and giving. Right. And she has barely anything. Right. But what she gave, she gave with out love. of with love out of out of what she, you know, had. What she had, not right. not you know surplus, right. and so God honors that. Does if you're a student and you only have right. fifty cents, a dollar, or a couple right. of bucks, right. my right. daughter's you know freshman right. in high school, right. giving something, right. and that that's a great point about yeah. the the widow's mite. The reason God liked her sacrifice more than the one that the rich people gave <clears throat> was not that it was the amount; it was what you said, the love in her heart. And there yeah. you have the relationship between a genuine sacrifice. And the happiness that that engenders inside you, it is good to feel the happiness mm -hmm. that comes from genuinely giving. And so that is why Lent is not sort of how you described it in a funny way at the beginning, but it's meant to get us into a state of virtue, right. which has an underlying positive emotional life. Now, by the way, we have different levels of our emotions. So, so you know, some sacrifices, they are difficult. They're supposed to be. And so on one level, you're feeling the difficulty in your soul, mm -hmm. but on the other level, you notice that sadness from sloth going away. On a deeper level, you have a happiness filling in there, even though on a higher level, you feel the pain, if you will, of your, right. of your sacrifice. And then the third so one is three. fasting. And there, so is this where i got to starve myself and no, I pass out? No, that would be wrong. That would be oh. wrong. You shouldn't, you shouldn't um, make it so that you're not, um, yeah, you're not able to do your work or be nice to other people, you know, um, but but there too, you know, you can, a lot of people pick Wednesdays and, and Fridays. We have the required fast on mm -hmm. Ash Wednesday and Good Friday, which is two small meals and one full-time meal and full-size meal and no meat, no meat. Right. And then, um, but then a lot of people on the, on the other Fridays, also during ordinary time, uh, but during Lent, you can give up, obviously, sweets, things like this, mm -hmm. but on Fridays, uh, maybe also try to do a similar sort of thing that you do on, on Good Friday, if, if you can. Um, but the idea there, too, or give up between meal foods, and the idea there is to feel it, but make it doable. Um, and then you can, another point about fasting, prayer, and almsgiving, I've been talking about our own happiness, because mm -hmm. you said, i got to be miserable. But we mustn't forget the relationship between other people. The right. whole point of being a happy Christian is to give yourself to others. Give your time, your talents, and especially your, your attention to, to other people. Um, and prayer for other people. So you can actually, in a mysterious way, when we make sacrifices, we can actually tell God, if you will, to direct the graces mm -hmm. to a right. certain person. And in some mysterious way, he, the ripple effect of our good acts... He somehow Butterfly directs them effect. at yeah. He directs them at yeah. people who are on our, our hearts. So, so there's uh there's our little. So reflection. we have three things: prayer, fasting, and almsgiving. And we're not so supposed to be miserable. Not miserable. We're supposed to get rid of sloth by making sacrifices. And, because, which, and ultimately, yeah. the whole purpose of Lent is to prepare for holiness in heaven. And, and leading up to what? <laughs> at the end of Lent, we Death. have. No! Oh, the resurrection! Resurrection, right? <laughs> new life. Great happiness. Yeah, it's new life, and that, that fits right in, yeah, right? Yeah, we're yeah. joyful because right. we're, we're retuning in right. to bring us to new life in right, Christ. Right, exactly. And then there'll be the resurrection. But that was pop quiz, is, huh? That was good. He got me. <laughs> the fullness of happiness, you know, yes. in the resurrection in heaven. Um, so so let's, uh, let's uh, keep in mind that idea of, of uh, sadness at being good is dissipated by making little sacrifices, and then we're surprised at yeah. how happy we are from those. Amen. Amen. All right. Good Good talk. So with you. that, Mike Giannotti. Peter Colosi. Dr. Peter Colosi. Coffee talk. Happy Lent. God bless. God bless. <laughs>